Virgo, do you feel it? It's all this energy in your fifth house. Virgo, this is your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries to Row. It is for Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs. My name is Michelle. Um, this is Born Without Boundaries to Row. I am an astrologer and tarot card reader, and I use astrology and tarot and oracle cards to provide you with weekly insights into the energies that are most impacting you and how to use them to be most productive, right? To make the most out of your week. Um, there's always an extended reading. There's two options now. Uh, I offer an unbound membership as well as the Vimeo videos. I offer an unbound membership to my channel that, um, enables you to have all the extendeds for the, like all the extendeds all the time for the length of your membership, as well as at least two lives, members only lives with me where you can ask me any tarot questions you want. So it's like having your own little me tarot card reader in your pocket as well as other benefits and perks. So I hope you will absolutely consider that. Let's get into the astrology. Oh, one more thing. Please remember to subscribe, like this video, share it on your social media platforms and ring that notification bell so you know when I upload your favorite content. Virgo's uploaded every single Friday. Let's get into the astrology first. So do you feel it? Because there's so much energy in your fifth house. Now, yes, because it's your fifth house, this could be a very romantic time for you. The Venus and Mars conjunction is still going on. The perfect conjunction was yesterday, but it, it's definitely still going on. And the energy is high. So this isn't just about sex or sensuality even though you're an extremely sensual sign. So you could be really feeling your oats revving up and feeling extremely attractive right now, which might open up your mind to realize you have more options than what you've settled for. So it might be very, very difficult for you cross watchers to convince your Virgos right now to settle for anything if in fact they've settled for less when it came to you. I'm just letting you know. Um, now, Virgos, are, you're very loyal. You love your long-term relationships. But this is a sense of really feeling your oats and really being, so, it's like what's in your heart being so profound, you cannot hide it. You cannot help but feel it and you cannot help but go after it. And that's really the energy that I want to draw your attention to right now. Virgo, for you, this is an uncharacteristic boldness that is going to defy this normal tendency to worry and overthink. Now the moon is in Virgo right now, but it's uniquely placed so that there is like, it's so that there's this wonderful energy of coming off of um, Jupiter and Uranus, which I think are sextile to each other. Um, and ultimately what's going on is it's making this worry. It's almost like you're, if you're worrying or you're overthinking, it's about not having the opportunities that you know are out there if you don't take the chance. So instead of worrying about taking the chance, you're worried about not taking the chance this time around because you've got such a buildup of courage in that fifth house of building, of career, of achievement, of doing, right? That's what Capricorn energy is. And fifth house is all about believing in yourself and believing in your ability to do it. And there's such a beautiful energy that's making you strong, that's filling you with courage and even a sense of leveling up like joining another group or or getting in with other people or building out your your circles right when it comes to um your sixth house which is in aquarius starting to nurture and develop other relationships getting more bold getting a little bit more public which is also not like you, you usually like to work in privacy but there's such a social aspect to you right now that i can't think that you don't like it's not impacting you in this boldness. And I got to say, use it. This is a time for you to use. It's a wonderful time for you to make some exceptional breakthroughs in your life, in the places of your life where it's most important. Because remember, that's what the fifth house will, will, will impact the most. The things that you are really driven to and that really matter to you a lot. There'll be this bold expression and behavior and, um, and, and, an uncharacteristic amount of risk that you're willing to take. So you go. Oh, God. There's a lot here, Virgo. 
there's a lot but a lot of it has to do with the past so let's start there Tr okay all of this is coming out so we're gonna read it as a whole okay so we have trust in the magic oh guys let me know in the comments below what part of this video you're resonating with most give me the timestamp. let me know because i'd love to know um trust in the magic this was a sense of denying the magic, um, shutting yourself away or being or shut off, feeling like there is no magic, um, not believing it, being too rational, shutting any new opportunity down or anything that wasn't rational, not making sense, shutting it down, somebody shutting it down, be loyal to what you love. This is a sense of not being loyal at all. This is a sense of instead almost betraying what you love or somebody betraying what they love by shutting down the magic and capabilities that were around them or by shutting down somebody else's magic and capabilities by shutting down and making them believe and that their magic was wrong or or bad or stupid this could be from your childhood and then we have co-create with spirit which is totally against god's plan somebody totally cutting you off anything that you were inspired to do saying it's bad it's wrong maybe being told it was evil or reckless or them trying to discourage you by by Putting, filling your head with these negative notions and these threats. Happy birthday, Doug Denny, right? Really horrible. And this and that are true. So basically, once again, somebody subvertedly kind of like cutting into you and making you think that um, it wasn't like that there, there wasn't two different ways to see a situation. There was only one way to see a situation. It's a very closed minded perspective. It's very heavy. It's very um, like, like subverted too. So somebody was kind of like undercutting you or trying to undercut you and then sing your own song. You were not allowed to sing. You were not allowed to have a voice. You were very much cut off. You were very much, and I know where this is leading now. You were very much cut off from the song inside your heart. Okay? All of that happened in the past. Like, it's, it's, it's a pile over here. It's in, that's where it popped out. Way in the past, right? Now I know where this, this courage is coming from. Because remember, what else is in Capricorn in your fifth house is Pluto. And Pluto remembers. It remembers from lifetimes ago. So this is karma that has to be addressed. This is dharma that has to be addressed. You could be carrying this from your past life or from, you know, your younger life. This is a sense of something's got to give and something's got to change. And this energy that Mars and Venus are creating, this creative energy is pushing you to change no matter how afraid you are because you're just sick of being stuck. So now we get to the present day. We have claim your independence. Bam. No more that shit. No more. Um, like this sense of I'm not going to like look at the cat. The cat's looking in the past. The cat's looking at that caged canary. You know, the cat's like, I'm going to eat this alive because it's such bullshit. The cat's like, I don't want any part of that. I want my freedom. The cat's like, I want to be playful. I want to have fun. The cat is recognizing all like the bad messages, right? And I'm set it like making a separation between itself and it, realizing that that is what somebody else put in my head, not my actual head, right? And then we have set healthy boundaries. So this is learning how to not listen to those negative uh, inputs. This is this is about um, some people deserve Berlin walls. <laughs> not Berlin. Yeah, some some people de some people deserve the Great Wall of China. Some people deserve wide open spaces. Some people deserve chain link fen fences with barbed wire, and some people deserve white picket fences. Right. I'm sorry, my dog just went crazy. Um, so it's it's learning how to um, modulate, right? And not decide in the extremes, but instead realize it's not about extremes. Extremes, going to extremes are about being backed into a corner and they're just as much a way to enslave me and make me adhere to somebody else's thoughts as anything right so because i because i could completely rebel and go the other way but if i went completely opposite they'd still be dictating what i believed because i'd just be believing the opposite uh, but now i get to choose 
how to run this own energy, how to run my own energy. And I get to dictate, um, I get to dictate how, what levels I accept of things, how much I listen, how much I don't. And I'm also going to start building walls toward people or situations that do not serve me and serve my heart, right? Um, this is also an implication that something is burdening you. You can feel the heaviness. You can feel like maybe you've set too many boundaries for yourself and those boundaries have actually become your own cage and you're tired of living in a cage, right? It's the heaviness that's starting to weigh you down. And then we have hummingbird be here now. This is Libra energy. This is hummingbird. So hummingbird it's about the beauty of the moment. It's about living here and now and being present and seeing the beauty of things right in front of you and the power of focusing on now so you're not weighed down by your past, right? And you're not anxious about your future. So you are truly free when you are living in the present, right? So you're not tethered to the past and you're not anxious about the future. You are free when you are focused on what you have in front of you, uh, 11, 11. And ultimately you see something so beautiful and so inspiring that you realize this is where I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus in my present. I'm going to focus in the here and now. This is your key out of your cage. That's, that's what it is. It's this mindset. That's the key out of your cage. And then we have see the big picture, which is Taurus energy. Um, but it's, 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 a, it's almost like you looked around you and you started realizing what was really going on. You looked around you and you started to see that there was more going on than maybe your fears or this bad information had told you. You're starting to realize there's just there's just so much more out there than um, I've been exposed to. Maybe maybe stuff was blocked from me. Beautiful things, wonderful things have been blocked from me or I've been blocking them for myself. This is a huge awakening. And then we have tend to the small things. So this is tending to the worries, you know, being worried, being scared, being anxious, um, and all of those things starting to build, right? And maybe in some ways, I don't know, like, hold on, let me, let me see. I was going to say some ways, see, like, no, that's not it. I don't want to misspeak and tend to the small things. Oh, it's about centering yourself. So to limit the anxiety is to to focus on this present moment and to start small, to impact the things that you can impact, right? To set your mind on not the big picture, right? But realizing that it really isn't about the big picture, that, that working on the little things, which is what you're really good at, is focusing on the details. Working on the little things is actually helping you focus on the present moment. It's liberating you from the anxiety of the future and the tethers of the past. And it's also helping you contribute in the best way you possibly can by day by day, taking little chips out of what you can do and what you can affect personally. This is a huge step forward because you are taking control out of somebody else's hands and you're empowering yourself with it now. And this is control of your own life. So this is, this is tremendous energy for you. I mean, beautiful. Virgo, we have snake, shed old skin. And that's almost like, cause I couldn't help but hear snake, the deception, right? the adder in your ear, the poison, the poison that was influencing you. It's like you're shedding that. You're, you're shedding those fears or worries, maybe about medical feel, fears and worries, right? You're shedding that. You're letting that go. You, like there's no room for that in your life anymore, right? You're getting rid of that. And you're also shedding old ways, like the more metaphoric way of looking at this card is you're, you're getting rid of old ways. You're realizing you don't have to stay the same person. You have to grow and that you have grown out of what you used to be. And this is a good thing because it's, just there's so much more room, right? It's almost like your old self had started to really harden on you, like a like a, a snake skin or like a, a hermit crab shell. There was no space for you left. You you were you were either gonna shed the skin so you could grow, or you'd be suffocated by your old self. And so there's a sense of shedding that skin. Take care of your needs. This is winter. 
And we are in winter now in the Northern Hemisphere, right? So it's a sense of becoming very aware of what you actually need, of having the space or, or having the time, maybe even the isolation to be able to get to the truth and the awareness of what it is you really need. Tremendous empowerment. And then we have Shalom Master. Be graceful in movement and action. So you're still working on this. It's like while you're in hibernation, you're working on becoming more fluid, more graceful, and mastering something. This could also be a sense of what your mind is on right now, right? You, you've able to cut this anxiety and find a new purpose and find your courage because you're now learning a new skill. You're building a new skill and you're seeing your power. And as you develop your skill, your power is growing. You're starting to expand and broaden your capabilities and what you could, what you ever could have thought you could have done. It's through learning, right? It's about, it's about the education, the learning and taking this chance again. This is also a sense of learning new things, opening yourself up to new ideas during the winter. It's like helping you, giving you like the, the space you need to really grow grow and prepare to expand holy crap wow powerful powerful breakthrough uh rest and rejuvenate okay and this is from heart heartache and loss so this is i think i felt as soon as these cards came out i felt maybe this is the first time in a long time you've been able to accept something that you grieved without fear and without suffering, but instead address the suffering, address the pain, hugged it, warmed it, honored it. And ultimately you're starting to now get relief. There's a, a sense of a real possibility of being able, those things in you that you hadn't want to deal with, that you've buried, the suffering, even the stuff that you've suffered so deeply from you haven't even wanted to acknowledge it to yourself. There's a, there's a, there's a respite coming. It's almost like you can, there's a, there's a, a you can release it now. You can let that go now. There's a lack of fear when you think about, it's like, it's like, you know, we hold on to pain. We hold on to pain because it becomes a familiarity. And a lot of times, especially when we grieve, when we've lost like a, a broken relationship, maybe the loss of a loved one, real heavy grief. Um, and you can grieve a job or a career as well. Anything that you put a lot of a lot of your heart into um, and your, your heart was broken for the loss of it. Um, I've noticed that a lot of times people will stay in that first aspect of grief, the pain, the suffering, and they'll stay there because that is the last feeling that they were able to feel. That's the last experience they were able to have with their loved one. That in some part of them, maybe even subconscious, they realized that after this, they'll never have physical interaction or experience with them anymore. So even if it's just the pain of losing them, they'd rather sit there with that because to let that go is almost like letting go of the person themselves and finally having to say goodbye. Do you know what I'm saying? Or the relationship itself and finally having to say goodbye because there's going to be no more experiences like physical experiences, not spiritual experiences. You could still definitely have those, but no more physical experiences between you anymore. And that's the suffering and heartache that keeps us stuck so much stuck where we want to be, which is in the denial of the loss, right? In the place where we could still experience them at all. It's like you'd rather suffer than to accept the absence of any kind of interaction with them. And this is a sense of being liberated from that, of finally being able to give yourself the rest from the perpetual pain and suffering that you've been going through for so long. You can finally let it go with the love of loving them 
and let it go with love and let it go with celebration and let it go with a, a cleanness and a wholeness and a, an openness in your heart that you haven't felt in so many years. It's like, it's like the pain is finally over. You don't have to feel that pain anymore, right? You get to rest, you get to heal, you get to make room for healing and growth, right? A really beautiful, oh my God, a really beautiful opportunity here to just, to, to feel happiness again real happiness complete happiness and how is this coming into your world like how how is this all happening um breathe so there's a lot of meditation here this is uh in other words connecting to your breath um, allowing yourself to be grounded by your breath and maybe incorporating meditation into your everyday life has helped you. But what brought a, around this realization? What brought around this change? What, what brought around this awareness, please, for Virgo? Um, that's not the answer to my question. What brought, a, what brought around this awareness? What brought, let's, you know what? That's the wrong deck. What brought around what brought around this awareness? What brought around this awareness? Um, um, there was some sort of, I don't know, maybe, maybe somebody who was wise, maybe a master of some sort, maybe a, a leader or a spiritual guide. This is this card is really about finding your own power, but I feel like maybe there was just somebody that actually broke through and helped to guide you through it. Um, and this is a gathering of friends. So it could have been basically realizing realizing your strength in a gathering of friends or realizing how good it feels to be around people again realizing that's what it is it's like it's like finding remembering who you are remembering the happiness you're capable of remembering the lightheartedness you're capable of that's what happened something happened to make you remember how good it feels to not suffer and to not be in pain and to, to have fun again and to be carefree again something happened to help you remember and god that feeling felt good enough to give you the courage to release the pain that was getting in the way let's go to tarot i love you guys i'll see you i'll see you in the links below